Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in and watching and coming back. All that stuff, really appreciate it. Hope you're having an awesome day. Um, so in this video, I'm gonna be in Luminar 3 and I'm talking about crafting what I consider to be a fine art photograph. Um, so I did a video a, a long time ago, you know, eight, eight months ago, I don't know, something like that, uh, asking the, the question like, what is fine art photography? And the truth is, it's not easy to come up with a definition for it, but there's two things um, that often come to mind for me, actually probably not often, probably every time that come to mind when I think about uh, defining a fine art photograph. The first one is monochrome, and the second one for me is a landscape. And so um, I've got two landscape photos. I'm gonna walk through kind of how I edit those to create kind of a, um, a, a fine art look and feel in the photograph using Luminar. So um, in both cases, as I said, they're landscapes, but they're also long exposures. And that's another thing that I think lends itself very well to being a kind of a, a fine art photograph. So let me just jump into the first photo. Here we are. Um, this is a waterfall shot in Canada. In fact, both photos are from Canada. There's a waterfall long exposure, and there it is in monochrome. And so let me reset these filters and I'll jump into the filters that I use to walk through that real quick. And then we'll get on to the next photo. Okay, so here's the uh, the photo. Now, keep in mind that's the base photo, right? From the uh, straight from camera, that was a a half a second exposure at f22. I remember this. I didn't have my filters, uh, but it was in a canyon, a little bit lower light, so I just cranked up the um, the aperture to be really tight, which means it's going to take longer for the light to get in, and uh, you know, did a little bit longer exposure. So I was able to do a longer exposure, a half second, not really long, but longish. Um, even though it was the middle of the day. So anyway, um, you can see the spots that I remove on the next layer, but um, this has the raw develop filter. I can't um, show a before and after on that other than this way. But uh, basically what did I, what I do, I, cranked the, I just cranked the contrast all the way to 100. And that's one of the other things I think about with fine art photographs is that they're very contrasty a lot of times. So I did that and moved up uh, increased clarity. Next up was black and white, and I didn't do anything with uh, saturation or luminance. Um, and in fact, I didn't do anything in that filter at all other than just turn it on, which automatically converts the photo to black and white. Uh, next was structure, and here I increased the structure and basically just brushed that into some of the rocks, right? I just wanted to accentuate a little bit of the detail in that rock and there, and you know what else I might do? While we're sitting here hanging out, I might put a little bit on those rocks and that one, there we go. So um, that was just really just to give it a little bit more grit and a little bit more punch. And then I uh, used the tone filter. And tone here was just a tiny bit of smart tone simply because it seemed like it was a little bit dark. So I got to that point and I thought, hey, that's a pretty good looking photograph. I, like, I mean, I'm biased, right, because I took it. Hey, real quick, by the way, I did crop. Um, that's a 16 by nine crop. I, I took out a little bit at the top of the photo. I meant to tell you that. I often forget, but anyway, I did a crop. But anyway, I was pretty much done except for the spots, and I was like, I think I like it. You know, it's it's pretty nice, um, but I wasn't really sold on it. So I went and did the erase image layer, right? You go up here to the tools menu, get the eraser. I took the spots out. Um, then I added a new layer, and I said, well, you know, I'm, maybe you don't know me, but if you do know me, if you watch my videos, you may know that I'm often kind of like, you know, what else can I do? Um, so I went and got the tone filter again, Love tone, it's absolutely just amazing filter. Um, and I increase contrast one more time. So the, the nice thing about photos like this is the water, uh, especially with, you know, it's got a little bit of light in it. And of course it's, it's, uh, it's got, you know, it's white, right? So it's, it's the highlights or the bright part of the image. Um, when I uh, increase the contrast, I'm really, I mean, it's increase, increasing contrast, right? So the dark stuff is looking darker and the bright stuff's looking brighter. So the difference between the two is, of higher contrast. Um, I don't know how else to say it. Anyway, that to me accentuates the water because all I really care about here is that water flowing over the rocks right here and the water coming down here and then kind of flowing into the stream. That's really mostly what I care about. Um, so I wanted to increase the contrast just to punch it up a little bit more and make that center of the photo where it kind of comes in at the upper left and kind of flows out at the bottom right. I framed it that way on purpose. It's like it's coming through the, uh, the photo. Anyway, I did that. Um, and so increased contrast, again, just to create more kind of um, 
focus, I guess, for lack of a better word. Um, and then the last thing I did was some split toning. Um, and as you can see, it's a little bit more silvery. And that's another thing I like to do with my uh, monochromes, especially when I'm kind of in that artistic, kind of kind of what I call the fine art realm, where I'm doing, you know, it's not just a straight black and white, um, but, you know, kind of really going more for that artsy look. I like to do a little bit of split toning. And um, I've got videos about split toning. I'm not going to dive into it, but basically you can pick a, a color for the highlights and a color for the shadows, and then a you know, increase uh, the amount of that color in the highlights or the shadows. And you can pick separate colors for either highlights or shadows. Um, in this case, I basically picked the same color for both. All I'm doing is creating more of a silver look. So there's the before, traditional black and white, you know, kind of gray. And here, to me, it's got a little bit more of that silvery kind of, what I call it a steel blue, but I just like that a lot, especially with long exposures in monochromes. I like that look a whole lot. So. I was able to go from that, you know, that's uh, that's cropped, of course, but there's my base photo to that, which to me is more of a fine art looking uh, kind of landscape shot. So let me go get my next photo and then we'll pop into that one as well. Okay, so here's another shot of Moraine Lake. I did a video a week or two ago, a couple weeks ago, about uh, editing landscapes in Luminar. And I took a number of photos from this area um, the night that I was there. In fact, I was there two nights in a row. And I did some long exposures like this. This was, I don't know how long, I'll have to check. But anyway, long exposure, got the nice clouds moving and reflected in the lake. Uh, but I wanted to create kind of a fine art monochrome. So after quite a bit of work, I turned it into that. And uh, to me, that's vastly different, but that's like really eye-catching to me. So let me reset everything and then we'll, uh, we'll walk through this workflow as well. Okay, so here we are now. Again, I've, uh, I've used the raw develop filter. This is a raw file in my Luminar 3 uh, library. So there's the original, and there it is with a, uh, a few minor adjustments in the, uh, in the raw develop filter. Primarily contrast, I took down highlights and increased shadows and clarity a little bit. One more time, there's the before. You can see some of the uh, sky uh, is just a little bit close to being blown out. Looks a lot better now. Um, so that's the raw develop. And then, uh, you know, similar uh, filter. In fact, the same filters plus uh, some extras on this one. But uh, next up was the black and white filter. And here, um, I actually took the luminance of the blue down. So let me show you what that looks like before. The blue is in the sky and the water, and it's a little bit blown out. So I just came over here to the luminance tab in black and white, and I just took that blue luminance all the way down to zero. Well, actually, it's not zero. It's negative 100. I took it all the way to the left. The point was um, I wanted to reduce some of that blown out kind of look in the sky, and because the sky was primarily blue, I, wanted, uh, I did that via uh, reducing the luminance of the blue in the black and white conversion. Um, filter. Uh, more contrast, took down shadows, and that was it. So I uh, didn't do anything on the saturation tab, although here's a little idea. I don't do it for this photo, but it may be something you want to think about. When you have photos like this with a lot of blue in them, you might consider just adding back a little bit of blue, maybe something like that. So that's 28. That might actually be too much. I might do closer to 20 or so. Um, you almost can't tell, but you kind of almost can tell it's you can see it as well as I can um, I just added back blue saturation to 20 right I don't want to go all the way because it's gonna look crazy although that's actually kind of cool but um, just adding back a little bit of saturation gives you I mean a, a, a highly desaturated photo but just a hint to blue just an idea again I'm not doing that in this photo but that was what I did with black and white conversion and I gotta say at this point I'm looking at the photo and thinking man, this is gonna be cool. Like, I already like it. I think it looks really good. So um, I kept going, of course. Um, here I went and added some structure. Let me just show you. That was positive structure of 40. And I just painted it in. If I could hit the mask button, there you go. Um, I just painted it into the mountains over here. And in fact, I missed some spots as I always do. Um, you know, and I could do a, a cleaner job here if I if I felt like I needed to, but I often don't feel like I need to. And I did a little bit around the bottom as well. All I'm trying to do is crisp up those peaks in the distance, uh, distance because, you know, in many ways, they're kind of the, like, I think your eye is drawn to those peaks, especially the ones uh, here. They just, uh, they really stand out to me. So there's the before and the after. Not a massive difference, but just a little bit of crispiness, which I think looks good. 
Um, and I think it's a nice contrast against a really smooth uh, lake and the really long exposure smooth looking sky. It's nice to have a little crunchiness there. Um, then I went with tone again and you know, wow, I really woke the photo up. I added contrast, but I bumped up smart tone quite a bit. I took the highlights all the way negative and increased the shadows a little as well. And I gotta admit, that almost looks like a monochrome HDR because it's incredibly evenly lit scene, most of which is due to smart tone. Um, but that's okay, right? So I did that, uh, it looks like that, and uh, you know, I still wasn't done though, so I was still playing around here. I did split toning again, very similar to what I did on that previous photo, which is give it a little bit of that silvery look. Again, just a thing that I like. Um, by no means do you have to do that, but around the 225 to 235-ish kind of range is where you get into the blues, and then just, um, you know, I got 21 in highlights and 13 in the shadows for the saturation amount. So just a smidge, really not much. Like I don't want to go heavy on the blue and do something like that. I just, I'm just looking for, you know, something light just to create a silver kind of look. Um, a couple of other little things that I did here, image radiance um, and Orton effect. I just added a little bit of both of these. And part of what that did is overcome the brightness that I created um, up here in tone with the smart tone filter. Um, and that's because they, they do add a little bit of glow in the lighter areas. I did a video a long time ago, I'll uh, put a link there, comparing image radiance to Orton. They do similar things, yet different things, and I'm not gonna try to explain it here, it's kinda hard to explain. Um, but visually they added to the photo a little bit for me, so let, let me turn these off again. And there's the before, really kind of crisp looking. You can see the crispiness from that structure filter that I did a couple of filters ago, um, and kind of bright. But I add a little image radiance and add a little Orton, and it just creates a little bit dreamier. And again, this is long exposure, so kind of dreamy by definition. And I'm kind of going for that fine art look, so dreamy's good with me, plus I just like it anyway. Um, so that was that, and then the last thing I did, I went and got the brightness and contrast filter, which Honestly, I don't use a whole lot. It's a separate filter, I think at the bottom of the filter menu. Um, but I went and I just added a little contrast right through the mountains and the reflections of the mountains. So let me show you the, with the brush. Let me hit the mask. There you go. So I just took that section, and as you can see, I increased contrast 28, and then I just painted it in selectively there. So let me um, click done. Let me turn this off again. So just look at that area of the photo. There's the before, and there's the after. Just selective contrast with the brightness and contrast filter and a brush mask. It just gives it a little bit of kick, and I, I just like the look. So something to think about is selectively adding contrast to your photos, um, I think can help you uh, create a, uh, an interesting look. Um, next, to our, next up was an erased image layer. Just went to tools, got the eraser, I took a few spots out and uh, there was a rock that's kind of sticking out of the water. I'm pointing at it like you can see it um, down here at the bottom. And I, it's a little bit distracting, so I took that out. Uh, and then the last thing was really, um, I thought I was done, but you know, I'm often never done. I just went and did my old uh, standby trick of negative structure, so this time negative 40, and I painted it into the sky and the water. Note, I didn't cover this part of the water, and that's because I don't wanna over soften that because I added contrast to it. Um, and in fact, I, when I added structure to those mountains, I could have added structure there as well to crisp it up a little bit, but I didn't want to soften that because the reflection I think looks great. And what the structure is going to do is kind of blur that section of the photo. So I didn't want to blur it. I just wanted to keep that kind of crisp. So just this guy and just the water um, that's reflecting this guy, not the water where it's reflecting the mountains. And that was it, my friends. I mean, it was, um, this was a, you know, a 20 or 30, probably a 20, well, less than 30 minute edit, probably 20, 25, I don't know what, something like that. I didn't time it, nobody cares. Um, my point was just, I spent a little time on it, probably more than I normally spend. Um, and frankly, you know, you could just add some contrast and a couple of minor things to this color photo and be like happy as a pig and, and you know what, right? Uh, and in fact, I did that in that other video, right? And I've done it on uh, other photos I've taken from here because it's simply freaking gorgeous. Um, 
just stunning. My iPhone shots look great from here because it's a stunning location. Um, but I wanted to go like a, I don't know, I wanted to make an art piece, I guess. And that's what I think about with fine art. I'm thinking this is something that somebody would be proud to hang on their wall. And in fact, I might print it. I don't ever print. And maybe I'll get some of these things printed at some point. Um, maybe I'll hang something on a wall behind me because I never have. Um, but anyway, I turned into that and I really like it. And more than anything, though, I hope, hope you got some ideas. Um, feel free to leave some comments below and subscribe and share with your friends if you found this helpful. Don't forget to um, like the video as well. It tells YouTube that you like what I'm doing and that helps them know that I'm creating stuff that's, uh, that's valuable, and I hope it is. So that's that for today, my friends, and um, thanks for watching. I'm going to keep doing some more monochrome stuff. Um, oddly, I've been doing a lot of street photography. Um, and traditionally, street photography is in monochrome, and I, all my stuff's in color. So maybe I should try some street photos that are black and white for a change. Um, I do like black and white, even though I'm a big color guy at heart. When I do stuff like this, I get really excited about it. So there's a black and white fine art photograph. Hope you liked it. Thanks for watching. Have a great one, my friends. I'll see you soon. Take care. Adios.